Okay. So you need to improve on your improvements. How, every morning when you wake up, ask, how can I improve this product, my service, or myself? And when you, whatever you write down, whatever you decide today is not enough. You need to wake up tomorrow morning and choose and look, ask the same question. How can I improve on my product, my service, or myself? And you look at it and say, okay, but I wrote this yesterday and I did it yesterday. How can you improve on that improvement? And if it just means improving on the improvement by being consistent with what you have decided on yesterday, then that's an improvement because before you did not do it. So let's go to um, what this, the four fundamentals that J.T. Fox taught, taught us. Um, J.T. Fox is known as the number one wealth coach. He's in his early 30s. He was broke. Um, he was in the red by over $30,000 when he got up and started going. And he got mentors, he got help. Um, number one, he was teaching us some of Warren Buffett's. He said these are his four strong fundamentals. Notice, they are strong fundamentals. And you can relate this to anything, business and life. You don't just have to be in business. business. Number one, have a great market. Number two, strong branding. Number three, relational capital. And number four, who is coaching you? Have a great coach. So let's look at number one, have a great market. Disruption works. Have you noticed that the people that get noticed <laughs> are the people who don't do things like everybody else. Yeah, you don't do things like everybody else. You disrupt what is there. You disrupt what you see. You don't sew a dress like everybody else. You don't use the same material everybody uses. You disrupt things. You don't use leather because they're using leather. You don't connect leather with, with the particular kind of material because that's what is done. The no, no, no. Disrupt things. Make it different. Disruption works. You want to disrupt the normal. And this is how you position yourself. You position yourself by disrupting the normal. I remember growing up, and when, you know, as a teenager, when some new fad comes out, everybody was wearing it. From then, I just used to dislike it. Why are you all wearing the same things? You look like lemmings. Lemmings are a kind of fish, and they all go together the same way. Everybody turns. Everybody goes right. Everybody goes left. <laughs> Why? Why can't you go left when they're going right? Do something amazing. You know, that's where peer pressure comes from and bullying comes from. Peer pressure is, is not the ways defined today. Oh, they're hurting me. They're going after me. Oh, oh uh, not peer pressure. Sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, peer pressure. Yeah. Oh, they, 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 they are making me. They want me to be like them. Don't you get it? They want you to be like them. Them. Them are the same. You are the only different one. So they are intimidated by the fact that you don't care that there are 50 of them looking the same. You are 51 and you are not going to look like them. It's called disruption. And, and human beings are comfortable when things are going normally and there's no movement of water, no waves, everything is going gently because we're all in agreement and we're all going. But, but sometimes it takes that one person to tip the boat a little, just shake it a little and you begin to shake creativity and innovation in people's minds. And you just create something amazing. Apparently, the reason, um, I haven't read the story, but maybe you know about it, how Steve Jobs decided to call it apple. He beat an apple. He was in India and he beat an apple. That's why it's a beaten apple when you see it. He beat an apple, he was in India, and the thought came to him, and that was it. Oh, wow, okay, you helped me, apple. That's how he called it. And he had the innovative idea in India. Sometimes you need to go away. To know how to disrupt a market. Not go away with your family. Go away by yourself. I, I wrote a blog post a couple of days ago called the creation room. The next day I wrote the innovation room. Go away into your room. Whatever you want to call your room. It could be a corner in your house. And go and create. Sit down there and begin to think. How am I going to disrupt things? How am I going to be noticed? So one of the things um, I think is JT Fox that does it. I'm not too sure. Or Warren Buffett. They do zero based budgeting. 
This is how that works. This is how you disrupt things. This is how it works. When you hire, when they hire somebody, they tell you your salary uh, can be sixty thousand. Uh, your salary is going to be thirty thousand pounds per annum. Your your wage. However, you can earn two hundred thousand pounds per annum, and this is how you do it. Zero-based thinking means there is nothing on the floor. We are not starting with anything. There is nothing in the, in the way. There is nothing we've done before. You are starting from scratch. You are going to build new customers. You're going to get brand new clients. And for every client you get that, you know, purchases for, of our services, you get 50%. By the time you add it up, by the time you add it up, you will be earning 200000 So it's up to panel. It's up to you. Do you want to just quietly, safely earn your 30000 At least it is money. At least you are earning something. Or do you want to go for broke? Do you want to just go all out? And, and what happens with zero-based thinking is your bosses or your employers, they challenge you. They challenge you. That's a challenge. It's going to get you thinking. Like, okay, where do I go? Who do I talk to? When do I call? Who do I call? You know, um, it's, it's just amazing. So you, you want to disrupt things. Things should not be as normal. Um, they should be as not normal. <laughs> so number two, that's great marketing, number one. Number two, strong branding. Not just branding, strong, because people have been banding that word around branding, branding, you must have a brand. I didn't understand it till I think last week. I didn't get what branding was. Strong, um, but this is not just branding, strong branding. It is what separates you from everyone else. The better the brand, the better your business. The better the brand, the better your business. It is what separates you from everyone else. How come we know Apple? Because there's an Apple, a sign. They make their things the same way, the same everything. They are not calling it a um, U phone. It's an iPhone. They didn't call it a U pad. It's an iPad. And their logo, which is part of their brand, the beating apple, is on it all the time, everywhere you go. They're not chopping and changing. Oh, today this works. Tomorrow that works. Oh, let's change it. Then why, why are you living like that? You, you, you won't be disrupting the market. You'll be disrupting yourself. So you want to maintain your brand. And then you should have two brands. You should have the U Inc. brand and your business brand. You should have two brands. Where when I walk down the road, they know this is Coach Kemi coming. So when people invite me, I say, introduce me as Coach Kemi. That is my name. In my, that's my brand, Kemi's brand. Then when you introduce my business, you introduce how to think. That is my business brand. But, and, and your brand only is as strong as you use it. You can't just change it and say, oh, okay, it's not going to be Miss Parker today. It's going to be Miss Inu. What's that? Miss Parker is Miss Parker, and you put Miss Parker everywhere. Till people begin to know Miss Parker with what you do, whatever your service is. So it must not just be branding, it must be strong. And part of your branding, when you, call, when, when, when you talk about you, Inc., is I'm Coach Kemi. My dressing must be speaking. My, my face must be talking. When I enter into a place, people must want to be around me or people should look around who just walked in. That is part of your brand. You know, I read somewhere it was a tweet by Chuck Swindoll. He said, nobody wants to listen to you speak about the gospel when your mouth is smelling. <laughs> it's part of your brand. Because some people are known for body odor. It's a brand. <laughs> what brand do you want to be known for? Some people are known for smelly mouths. Have some mint, either minty chewing gum or mint sweets in your bag all the time. All the time. If you don't want to have that, you can have those sprays, mouth sprays. Have it there all the time. You don't want to be known for a strong smelly brand or a strong messy brand. You want to be known for strong branding that works. Number three, relational capital. Relational capital. The next sentence explains what that means. People invest in people. People invest in people. People must like you. 
Your network equals your net worth. Your network equals your net worth. Don't hire on skills. Hire on attitude. Don't hire on skills. Hire on attitude. Before we get there, let's talk about people investing in people. If you want people to, to come to you, to even talk to you, they must like you. You must impress them. You must approach them in such a way they want to come and talk to you. Now, if you have a business and you want them to buy from you or you want them to invest in your business or come alongside you and work with you in that business, they must like you. Because your network, the people you spend time with is your network. The places you go to work with them. So network means that you are working the net of people is equal to your net worth. So that also tells you that you need to network with the right people. You don't want to, if, you're, if you are in a business where you sell jewelry or you're in a business where you sell precious metals, you don't want to be talking Mixing with people who sell clothes. That can't be your network. Although it can. You know, you, you, you match your, your clothing with their jewelry. But if you have precious metals, again, what are you talking to people who sell clothes for? You want to talk to people who are also in the precious metals industry. Who, are, who either use the precious metals to make um, jewelry. So then you can network. But mainly, you want to network with people who would like to invest with you, with strong people, people who are up in their game, not low in their game. Don't cast your sights low. Don't look down where you should be looking up. Radically alter your thoughts. Look up. Because that's where you want to go. You don't want to go down. You want to go up. So you need to be talking and networking with the people who are up there. I remember um, I was with... with uh, one, of, one of you here during the week and um, I, it just came to me and I said, you know, one day we won't have time to be sitting and talking to each other like this because we'll be talking to the billionaires of this world. We'll be sitting in their presence. We won't be calling and picking. We'll be calling our, he will call his personal assistant and I will call mine. That will be the sort of people we'll be mixing with. But we are starting. So I, I remember I wrote something else, a status today on Facebook. Ask, think, I, I, I wrote something like, think, the, who are the people uh, uh, that are influencing me? And what are they doing to me? Do I like it? If you don't like it, change them now. Don't change them tomorrow. You want to actually consider that in a day, 24-hour day, who are you spending the most time with? In, in one day. They are influencing you. They are persuading you one way or another. You are doing what you are doing based on their influence. So what are you, do, what, what are you doing? What are they getting you to do without getting you to do it? If you don't like it, stop. Change them now. Change them now. Change them now. Don't hire on skills. Part of relation, relational capital is this. You don't hire on skills. You hire on attitude. That's one thing J.T. Fox said um, and Warren Buffett does. He also does it. You hire on attitude. So let me explain what that means. Um, person A has the qualifications to be a marketer in your business. He has not just got his, uh, his, his first degree, he's got his MBA in marketing or whatever it is. And he's actually in the process of doing his PhD. And he's so bright, he's so intelligent. But person B does not have her first degree in, in marketing, has not even been to university. They're about the same age, but person B is eager to learn. Person B is just ready to do whatever you say. If you say to her, jump, she will say how high. If you say, go sideways, she will go sideways. Why? Because she believes you know what you're talking about. And she or he is ready to learn. That is great attitude. But person A, with all the qualifications, you say go left. He will tell you that, look, I'm actually doing my PhD now. And left is not the way to go. Theoretically speaking, now we have to have a conversation. And you don't want to be having a conversation with someone you hire or with your partner in your business where, where, where the person is not, we are not going to agree and the person is not going to run and make the business happen. You want to talk with someone that has the attitude, the willingness to learn. Find someone that needs you as much as you need them. This is who to partner with, and it goes on and on and on from there. There's something else he said, hire PSD. 
PSD stands for poor, S for smart, and D for a deep desire to get rich. A poor person, a smart person with a deep desire to get rich. Many people who have qualifications, or some people who have qualifications, or, or they, they feel they are enlightened, they don't have a deep desire to get rich. And they definitely are not smart. Because if they were smart, they will have a deep desire to get rich. When you say jump, they will say how high. They won't say, I've got a PhD. Do you know how old I am? Do you know how long I've been at this business? No, no, no. In fact, there are many people in, in person A's category. When you tell them, well, we're going to start with zero-based thinking. There's nothing on the floor. We have no clients. You're not going to work with who we have. You're going to build yours. Zero-based thinking so you can earn 200,000 pounds. Or we can pay you 30,000 pounds per annum. They say, oh, no, 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 no. I don't take below 25 grand or 35 grand. That person has, got it, has shot himself from 150. 55, 50, 160,000 pounds per annum. He doesn't want it. He is not smart. The qualification does not. You want to have somebody on your team that will treat your business, your service, your money like it's theirs. Like it's theirs. Like it's theirs. Um, um, somebody here has been working with me over all our, all our seminars, and she's always there before me always there before me, like it's hers. She always says, what should I do? Like it's hers. Like it's hers. That's, you hire attitude. You work with attitude. You don't do different. And lastly, number four of the four fundamentals is, who is coaching you? And I have something to read um, on that, actually. I wonder if I move um, this, if I move this, it will carry on recording. I hope so. Oh, it will. Fantastic. So I wrote something. Um, I read something, and I, I just want to read it here. Online this morning. Okay, I think that has gone now. I cannot. Okay, it's there. It's right there. So I read something about coaching. Let me carry on while I bring it up. A coach will make you more. Will make you more. You will become more when you have a coach. There is no point doing everything by yourself. You know why? Because if you do it by yourself, all you have is just your own thinking. Your thinking is amazing, but somebody else will come and poke you, pinch you, prod you, press you, and say, you can do this. Why don't you do this? That person will hold you accountable. Let me read what Edmund Lee puts here. He said, number one, a coach will help you work on your business rather than in your business. Number two, having a coach will help you to be accountable for the goals you set. Number three, a coach will help you regain enthusiasm when you feel stuck. Number four, you can't observe yourself as thoroughly as a coach can. Number five, a coach can help you learn how to prioritize your limited time. And that's from edmondslee.com. If you want to go and read some more, e d m u n d s l e e dot com. A coach can help you learn how to prioritize your limited time. Bring your work. A coach will help you bring your work and worth ethic together. Your work and your worth. They will help you bring it together. That's what my coaches help me to do. You are more than this. You are bigger than this. Why don't you bring your work and your worth ethic together? A coach helps you to decide and keeps you on track and holds you accountable. Makes you better. Many people don't want coaches, especially many Christians I know, because they don't want to be stretched. They just want to stay in their comfort zone. Someone told me this morning, actually it was my lady here. She said, someone said, my daddy always says, comfort is a bastard. Comfort just wants you to stay there. That's why they say, leave your comfort zone. I don't know who gave people zones, but you know, just leave it. And go where you need to be. Stay where you need to be. Go out there. A coach shows you how to invest in right people. Um, that, that's the PSDs as well. A coach shows you how to hire PSDs, poor, smart people with deep desires to get rich. 
A coach shows helps you to realize that you are developing thoroughbreds, not donkeys. You are developing eagles, not turkeys. A thoroughbred are those huge horses, like stallions, who, you know, when they stand, they are huge, they are bigger than all the other horses, not a donkey. You are developing thoroughbreds, not donkeys. A coach will help you to realize titles are cheap. Coach, come here, you're a coach. It's cheap. So, what are you doing with it? Performance, not titles. Results, not talk. Huh? Performance, not titles. Results, not talk. I am going to this. I am going to that. I am going to become this. Uh, what are you doing with it? Yes, 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 yes. But we haven't seen what you're doing. A coach will get you up and out, up and going. So can you imagine? These four strong fundamentals are Warren Buffett's, is what Warren Buffett's businesses are based on. He apparently makes um, somewhere in the $30 million a day because he has businesses a day, a day. He's a billionaire, but you go and check him out. He's a billionaire on many levels. He has lost businesses because he made bad calls. So that happens in life. But you get up, you dust yourself up, and you keep going. Look at them. You have to have a great market, strong branding, relational capital. Who is coaching you? That tells you Warren Buffett has coaches. My, my, this number one wealth coach, JT Fox, he has coaches. I have five. In fact, they are increasing now. They are increasing now because I have um, um, specific business coaches. The others are generally life coaches, so they go into different areas of my life, including my business. But I have now, I'm building and developing specific business coaches. You should pay your coach. Pay your coach. Pay your coach. Pay your coach. I have someone in my life who decided to pay me like three years ago. She said, I will be putting £25 in your account every month. And she did not ask me to be her coach. She asked me to be her sister, her friend, but and, and we had days in the month or week that she would call me and we'll go through whatever she wants us to go through. Oh, she couldn't afford it, so she stopped after a while. Then after a while, she started putting five pounds. Whatever you put in there, and even that she does on and off, whatever you put in there, put in, pay your coach. I've realized that because I've decided to take massive action, I, I looked at her and said, Kemi, how much are you prepared or willing to pay to get to where you want to go? How much are you willing to pay? What are you willing to do? Um, so let's talk about on page two, and we'll take a break after this. The cut, cut, grow strategy. This is something else Warren Buffett and JT Fox mentioned. I wonder, what's the cut, cut, grow strategy? Cut non-essentials out. You want people who treat your product, your business, and your money as if it was theirs. Cut non-essentials out. So JT Fox said one day he was walking through his company and he noticed that they just print anyhow. They just print. So he stopped it and he cut it out and he took out printers. <laughs> he said, that's enough. You're just printing for no reason. No, you're wasting ink. He said, people said, oh, well, you are cheap. Yes, so he said, say what you like. Notice it's cut somewhere, then cut, then grow. It's not just cut, cut. Cut here, yeah. cut there. And they are non-essentials. You have to cut off non-essentials because they are costing you. You must be in business or in life to be better, not to lose. So you're in business. he said, I'm in business to make money. I don't know about you, but I'm in business to make money. That made sense to me. In the past, it wouldn't have. But he's, I'm in business to make money. I'm not in business to lose it. So if he's taking money away, but that money that he's taking is not making me business, and I, there is a way to get that same thing printed or emailed, then you know what? That's what's going to happen. And there is a particular company, I don't remember, if, I think it's Burger King when Warren Buffett took it over or so, or 3G Capital, one of them. They, they have open plan offices, they cut out the corporate jets, cut out the executive suites. Everybody, when they travel, they go economy, no matter your level, and you stay in a normal hotel. You don't have all, they cut and they cut. And do you know how much money that is saving? Then grow. Now look for a growth strategy. Don't just cut, cut. 
What, where all that cutting and all that money you've saved, what are you going to use it for? Where are you taking it? All that, I am not watching TV again. I am not going to take um, 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 chewing gum. I'm not going to lick sweets. I'm going to, I'm going to sleep early. I'm going to drink more water. What is it growing you up to be better for? Better for what? What are you going to do with how healthy you become? Are you just going to be there still? You know, <laughs> but he says there are certain things you should not cut off. Do not cut off your marketing. Marketing is the lifeline of your business. It is your lifeline. Marketing is one of your lifelines. You need, so when you market yourself, it's how you dress, how you smell, what, what your hair looks like if you're a woman and even if you're a man. Solid cut. I, I, I know my pastor, for example. I understand, I think he cuts his hair every week or every two weeks. He's always looking sharp. Uh, and that's the image we have of him, sharp, just always sharp, always immaculately dressed in his suit, always. I remember three-piece, 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 three-piece. I rarely see him out of a three-piece, rarely. He does sometimes, but you, now that's, that's the picture, that's his personal branding. That's what he looks like. How do you, what do you look like? Oh, I'm just going to get bread, and then you throw some... Crazy joggers that you should have thrown away, and then you should. I used to do that all the time. I just, I'm just going there. Do you know who has seen you? Do you know who has seen you between your house and that shop and back? And I'm telling you, the shop in near my house is less than one minute literally, one minute. Bam, bam, I'm back. Do you know who has seen you? Whoa, do you know who has driven past <laughs> that could have said, Wow. Look how she's dressed. Let me stop and talk to her. Whoa, I own this um, organization. What do you do? You look so good. I would like people, someone dressed like you to run my organization. <laughs> and there you go. You just don't know. Branding. Don't cut off your branding. So don't cut off your marketing. Except if it's not working. There is bad marketing. Number two, don't cut off your branding. It gives your business support. The way you dress, the way you look, the way you conduct, the, the way somebody looks at your website. It doesn't have to have all the bells and whistles and ooh, 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 but it should be nice and simple and user-friendly. Do you know what user-friendly means? When I get there, I can use it. <laughs> I am not confused, bogged down with too much information. Click here for this. Click here for this. If you want this, colors are going, something is flashy. It's too much. It's just gentle. You're, that's part of your branding. Don't cut it off. It gives your business support. That kind, of, that kind of website will not give your business support. It will even give you, even if it's just a personal website. I'm sure Kim Kardashian, apparently she doesn't have anything, she just has her name and her body. And I'm sure she has a website, kimkardashian.com. If it doesn't support her, her branding, she should just shut it down. Uh, but I'm sure she does a good job and she has people that do that for her. A good job. And number three, your coaching and your education. This helps you grow and explode your business. It helps you grow. You see, you must, you must invest in educating yourself. Reading books. Talking to people wiser than you. Talking to people who know their stuff. Um, um, going online. This is the online age. Nobody has a, an excuse. Not one excuse. Not one excuse. Nobody has an excuse. Don't cut off your coaching and education. Grow it. Grow it. Grow it. Do what you need to do and grow it. So, in your, in your life, what do you need to cut off? And in your life, what do you need to grow? Let's write that down. What do you need to cut off in your life, in your business, and what do you need to grow?